Good morning, friends. I hope everyone's having a great summer. I have a new axe video for you today. Today, we're going to talk about all of the accidents I've ever had with axes and hatchets. And then the important part, which is about like dummy rolls, integration, being involved in our own safety, and yeah, what we learn from accidents, near accidents, and imagination and experience. So, accident number one. I was 19 years old. I'd really never used axes and hatchets to any significant degree. I was uh, working at a summer camp as a counselor and I hooked up with the other counselor and uh, we just hit it off and decided to go build a leaf hut in the woods in North Carolina and live in there. During that summer camp, Eustace Conway visited. If you don't know who Eustace Conway is, you can look him up on YouTube or read The Last American Man, a uh, fascinating character. Anyway, at the time he was just a little bit older than me, but way more experienced because he would started doing this stuff when he was a kid. I grew up in the city, I had to learn everything uh, pre almost on my own. Like, especially at that point, I just didn't really know anything. I didn't know how to sharpen things, I didn't know how to use tools, I didn't own a hatchet or an axe. I was trying to carve this like wooden bowl or something out of a big old chunk of wood with like a Swiss Army knife, right? A dull Swiss Army knife, but I was super determined that you, I could always say that about me. Um, anyway, he saw me working, he's like, uh, took pity and he's like, I could rough that out with my hatchet. And I'm like, really? With a hatchet? I was thinking like, you know, hatchet job, like that would be super crude and you're just hacking off big chunks and stuff like that. And he just sat down and in a few minutes he hewed out like the rough shape of the bowl on the outside. And I was like, ding, light bulb moment, right? Uh, when Eustace Conway like roughed out my bowl for me. And after that I was like, okay, I need a good hatchet but I didn't have one. This girl and I moved uh, to North Carolina and we started building this big leaf hut thing to live in uh, out at her friend's property. She had this old S-wing hatchet. It's just like uh, the solid metal handle. Anyway, she had one of those and one day I took it out to get some firewood or something because we were cooking outside and in, in the leaf hut all the time, just open fires, that's all. All the cooking we did was open fires. And I remember just getting a piece of wood, putting my hand on it, and then just chopping like right into my thumb. I still have the scar. It was a pretty big cut. It was bleeding a lot. So I just, I just let it bleed. And I went out and I got a bunch of herbs. I got some yarrow, I know, probably some plantain, uh, pine needles, like anything I could think of that was astringent and antiseptic. And I made this warm tea. By the time I was done, like the cut was swollen way out like it was like this big open gash of like maybe almost like a quarter inch like strip of gash there it was pretty deep it was probably like maybe well I didn't hit the bone so maybe only like a quarter inch deep but it was at an angle so it was pretty big so I soaked it in that tea and by the time I was done soaking in warm tea for like 20 minutes it was actually completely closed back down. Like all the swelling went down, the astringency of those herbs like pulled the tissue back together and like firmed it up. Put a poultice on it, kept it wrapped in a cloth, changed the poultice every day and it healed up just fine. Although it was numb. Uh, there was some numbness there for, for years, like at least 10 years. Okay, now that seems really stupid, but when people are first starting out with stuff like that, they will do really stupid things like that. Because I've seen a lot of people do them, I've watched them do them, I've stopped them from doing them, and I've done it, you know, myself. But, you know, I learned a lot from that. I was like, okay, uh, don't put your hand down and then cut it. <laughs> Accident number two. I was getting tendonitis a lot. I was like in my mid-20s, probably early mid-20s. I was just tanning hides like all the time. Just a lot of stuff that was really taxing and I, I wasn't, I didn't have good work habits and I worked too hard and too long and I wouldn't take breaks and stuff. So I was having a hard time with the classic American hewing hatchet, which is actually an English pattern called the Kent. And they're pretty heavy, maybe up to two pound Kent style heads, you know, and I wanted something lighter. So I was talking to my friend, Greg Blomberg, who runs Kestrel Tool, he started Kestrel Tool amazing tool maker his uh, check him out on the web his crooked knives are amazing and well worth the investment i was telling him about that he's like oh i actually make a small hewing hatchet you know that i and i have one for my that i made for myself and i could make you one right made this hatchet just for me uh had a leather sheath on it and i was pulling it out of the sheath and he was trying to tell me to be careful because the sheath was really awkward and it was super super sharp he's like that thing is super sharp be you know and then I just it came out and just sliced my palm open I was like too excited too rushed I'm like ADHD hyperactive you know 
not a good person always to be around sharp duels. Sliced my hand open, you know, whatever, took care of it, healed up. Third accident I can think of that's relevant, almost not even relevant, uh, was here. I was splitting firewood on like a, a stump, which I don't usually do anymore very much. I hit like this, you know, dry hardwood with a splitting maul, pretty explosive, and a piece of that wood flew off and nailed me in the shin. Bad enough to like leave a dent and it was red for a year or more and, and tender for like a year or more. I don't think I broke a bone or anything like that. Uh, pretty hard to avoid that. That's it. That's all of my accidents in 35 years of swinging axes and hatchets. Um, but why? And let's talk about that and also near misses. So let's go to near misses now. The near misses I remember that really stick with me, that I can remember vivid, just as vividly as the accidents. One, I was taking a hatchet and like limbing a tree upward like this. Again, I was like maybe 23 or something like that. Still not very skilled. Even though I was using hatchets quite a bit, I just wasn't that skilled yet and I really didn't understand how to like set them up right. It's a dumb idea to generally, I mean, I don't say that I never do it, but I, I know more now and I'm more careful and I understand the parameters I have to work within. But, you know, limbing up a standing tree is, is just really dangerous. But I probably was doing that because there's this dummy rule, like every time you read anything about axes in a book or something, which is where most of my information still came from at that point, or my own experience, they'll tell you like, you know, don't limb going toward the butt of the tree, have your bit, you know, the sharp end pointing toward the tip of the tree, because the limbs grow out and they, they come off easier that way, usually. Um, not always true though, and this is the problem with dummy rules, it's not always true. Right? There are lots of situations where I'll limb coming down the tree. People who are all about dummy rules, a uh, cl classic example would be Wrangler Star, right? Like never do this, proper this, never do that, always do this. You know, when you hear a lot of that, just your bullshit detector should go off. So people like that will tell you like, you know, always, you know, limb up the tree, never limb going down the tree this way. But that's probably why I was trying to limb like up this tree, even though it was standing and it was super awkward and dangerous. So there's this thing, it, it, tell me if anyone understands the physics of this, cause I don't. But if you are swinging a, an ax or hatchet and you hit a tree, it almost seems like it'll bounce off and pick up speed. Maybe it has something to do with like the energy of the head bouncing out of the tree and then being catapulted by like the springiness of the tree or the bark. Maybe that's what it is, but it almost picks up speed. So I'm going like this and I probably swung too hard and too enthusiastically and you know, it bounced off and it just whizzed right past my head, right? Razor sharp hatchet, just whoosh, And I was like, whoa, okay. You know, that put the fear in me, best way to put it. Put the fear in me. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna do that again. But just as importantly, it was like, okay, this is super, super dangerous in general, right? That's also valuable. Just that thing of having that close call that, that, that makes it real and makes it visceral. So next one, I had a Hudson Bay ax, uh, which I don't like much and not recommend it. I broke up with that ax later, but it was super sharp. And there's kind of like two da super dangerous phases. One is when you don't have enough information, like say with a sharp tool, driving is a perfect example. So I'll use driving as an example. When you're learning something dangerous that's new, like you don't have enough information, like you haven't integrated enough experience and information and coordination, all that to make it all work. So like if you give a 16 year old kid a car, they're probably gonna screw up. They may not result in an accident, but it might very well result in a near accident. And a lot of times it does result in an accident. And there's just this danger phase when you're just getting started and you don't have enough information yet and you haven't had the experience that's gonna like bring your awareness up of what's going on, how dangerous is this, what situations are dangerous and, and all that and what to do about it. But then there's a second phase okay that is the cocky phase so that's when you start to think you know what you're doing you start to feel yourself but maybe you don't have all the information yet or you don't have that piece of information yet that humility is important right you don't have the humility information yet that's kind of the phase i was in here so we were at this big camp out in the desert it's march in the high desert and it's blowing sleet and pouring rain like it's just all over the weather's all over the place but it was really cold at night usually, so we are burning like large piles of wood. People would go out every day with a truck and just bring in a huge pile of wood, and then Atlatl Bob would stack all the wood 
and, and burn all of it super fast because he's a pyro. Anyway, so there's this huge tangly pile of limbs that I just wanted to break it down a little bit. You know, I wanted to break down the 15 foot long pieces a little bit. So I'm just waiting in there with my axe and I've been using my axe a lot and, and like just starting to figure everything out, right? So I, I was like kind of in there freestyling, like in, in the flow state. And at some point I just did something wrong, took too much of a chance or something, missed something, cut through something. I don't remember what exactly or glanced and it just whipped right past my ankle like this razor sharp axe just whipped past my ankle and I'm well aware at the time of what that could do to flesh. By that time I've skinned tons of deer, I've like used hatchets to like carve green bone. Um, if you try that sometime you'll see just how deep an axe or hatchet can cut into a green bone with not that much force. And again just put the fear in me and gave me that like that adrenaline rush of like whoa okay this is for this is for real let's integrate this so between accidents and near accidents and also imagination we can gain a lot of information that we can integrate into our practice uh, to keep ourselves safe it's not just about the specific things that can go wrong it's also about the attitude that things can go wrong and, the, and just the danger of the tool, like just accepting that. So that's, that's thing number one. Screw this dummy rule that, or stupid thing people say like about guns to guns and axes. They're safe if you just use them right. Yeah, well, things happen, uh, unforeseen circumstances, accidents happen. We have emotions, you know, people do things when they shouldn't be doing them. They're too tired, too angry. Uh, too distracted, too happy, too excited, whatever. We're fallible people using a dangerous tool. Just accept that first off and, you know, go from there. And then also just the idea that there are so many specific things that can go wrong and the humility to understand that you may not know what they are yet. I really try to approach my axe work that way all the time. What haven't I learned yet? What haven't I seen happen? What else can happen that it's not in my catalog? So that's what it's about. Like dummy rules make dummies. It's a, it's a bad idea. It's a bad approach. Well, really it gives you a false sense of security because you think, well, if I just follow this, so-and-so expert said, blah, 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 everything's going to work out fine. It just, uh, it just isesn't like that. Like real safety is, an, is a process of involvement where you're gathering data. You just keep gathering that data and, and trying to integrate it. There's a video I'm going to link right here, but I'll link it at the end of the video too that is just me sitting in my trailer talking about those type of concepts and, and uh, acts and sharp tool safety basically. Integration. Think about this. What if whenever you picked up your axe to go out and use it for a while you did like the you know you see uh, always in movies and stuff of like the Japanese swordsmen like sitting on the ground with their tool like paying respect to the tool and just getting that moment of focus just what if you did that with your axe you know you go out in the woods and you sit down on your butt in the dirt you know to humble yourself for a few minutes for like a minute or 30 seconds even and just take that moment to be like this thing's dangerous it's you know, up to like how I use it and paying attention to the circumstances I'm in to use this thing safely and just go with that and you know if you want to add something to that and you could do this you know in a little ritual like that or just at any time imagine this cutting into your flesh like in the worst possible way like to the point where it makes you shudder you know this information that's that's still information and it's like touching bases with that reality that you could end up at any time whenever you pick one of these up and swing it and that's the reality and it requires in order to not do that it requires focus it requires attention it requires intelligence and thinking ahead and imagination because not only can you imagine that but when you're working if you're working well you're, you're thinking of there's two really important safety principles one is like edge awareness like where is the edge at all times and it's not like that's the only thing you're paying attention to but Whenever I pick up a sharp tool, hopefully that's in my subconscious background all the time is where is this edge at? And then the other one is follow through. And what follow through means is not just like, okay, well, I'm going to swing this. I'm swinging it this way. Where is it going to go? And am I in the way? It's also every other circumstance surrounding that situation that might cause something to happen different. 
and what's going to happen. Like, is, are you going to hit a twig? Are you going to bounce off? Is it going to fail to bite? And it's not really about just saying, okay, well, I'm going to do the absolute fail-proof safety thing every time. That's like the dummy rule mentality again, right? It's an assessment. So let's say that, you know, there's something I want to cut here, and if I cut it like this, I could hit myself. Well, instead of moving, I could also just point my axe in a different direction, right? So, you know, I, I heard people say, like, I only split kindling by setting the kindling down, holding it with another stick, and then hitting it with the hatchet. To me, that's like an unnecessary level of safety. There's ways that you can adapt and like do risk assessment and like make it adaptations. What I was trying to get at though is that you're using your imagination all the time in these scenarios if you're doing good safety practice because you've gathered information and you're using your imagination to say like what could happen, like what could go wrong here and what are the possible outcomes of this depending on how I use the tool, how well I use the tool. Like how confident are you in being able to hit like a certain spot at the right angle? How confident are you in the grind of your ax, which hopefully you set up to cut well, to bite at that angle and all this different stuff. So really the imagination is an important component and we can that's real information that we can use and integrate back into our practice. I highly recommend this video on uh, sharp tool safety that I made a long time ago. I wish it had a lot more views. I think it's super valuable. A video playlist of just uh, more axe content. It's about insight and I have insight. Watch my content, you'll see I have a, a unusual level of insight into this subject. It comes from immersion and experience and you know thought and great care. I'm not bragging, just telling it like it is.